So just an explanatory note here, guys, before the uh, video actually starts. You might wonder why I've chosen to uh, frame the trace uh, the way I did in the video. Um, I didn't, basically. Keep in mind on the DSO 152, there is no capacity to adjust the trigger uh, point with respect to the X axis, okay, across the screen. So you'll see there is no offset and the trace, the um, secondary trace starts right at the extreme left of the screen. Less than ideal as far as appreciating uh, the lead to the uh, trace itself, right? But uh, again, appreciate that I cannot adjust that. So that's why it looks like uh, it does in the video. You can get around it by uh, putting the trigger mode in auto and letting it scroll and capturing it manually with the stop function if you wish. Um, but that's about all you can really do Hence, the trace looks like it does in the video. It's likely most people would agree that it's asking a great deal from a $20 oscilloscope uh, to pick up a secondary ignition trace, right? But let's ask it anyway. Let's see what happens. So I've done a wee bit of preliminary adjustment on this thing, guys. So in the interest of expediency, to be quite honest. Um, so there's my settings. You can see I've got the trigger on normal, on the rising edge. 200 millivolts per division. There's no attenuation required. There is no fancy probes. This is just the uh, simple leads that come with the uh, with the rig, guys. And uh, there's no attenuation required because all we're going to do is pick up uh, quite minuscule uh, induct inducted signal that will go into the line from the magnetic field that radiates from the uh, coil on plug when it's operating. Right. Uh, back to the settings. Sorry. Uh, one millisecond per division on time base, DC coupled. That doesn't matter a great deal, to be honest. And of course, the mode will change as we as we operate it. What do I have here? It's just a bench test setup, guys, with a signal generator. Um, the coil actually operates on um, 12 volts on the ground, as you can imagine. What operates the coil uh, proper is the five volt pulse, which is applied from, in this case, it's my bench test uh, setup, obviously. In your car, it would be the uh, the ECM, which supplies a five volt pulse. The width of that pulse is going to affect the duration. Uh, perhaps I'll uh, take a look at that. Right, let's spark it up. I've got a preset here, guys. You'll hear the uh, coil uh, firing the plug here. It's firing at a 12 hertz rate. Duty cycle on the five volt signal is set for 5%. This 5% uh, duty cycle affects the uh, width of the pulse. The width of the pulse affects the dwell time of the, uh, the coil saturation, guys, right? It'll, uh, essentially, the, uh, the longer the dwell time, the more energy is being put into the coil. There is a point where it'll reach saturation and you're just making heat, you won't get any more energy in the spark. But that's the short, long and short of that. So let's uh, take a look at what's going on with the scope here. So again, just the uh, just the leads, guys. The setup I have, and I'm just bringing this into proximity, and you can see we do in fact have a signal that's induced, right? Now this will look like garbage to some guys. It just random noise. It is not. You can make sense of this if you know what you're looking at, right? So let me just see if I can. Because I'm in normal, what I'll do is I'll just move this in and out here, guys, until it can capture a signal, which is kind of ideal. That's not bad. Let's just leave it at this. And turn this off so you don't need to listen to any noise in the background. Oh, it triggered. I must have moved it. it triggered one more time. I should have put it in stop mode. Let's try that again. <clears throat> I should have known better there. <clears throat> That's good. Okay. Let's put that in stop so I can hold that. Not going to change. Now I can turn it off. Okay. Right. Did it change again? No, I don't think so. Okay. So there's not a great deal to be seen here, guys. And I could show you a noisier signal with a wee bit higher amplitude, but it gets a bit noisier. But the uh, elements are going to be remain unchanged, although the degree of noise on the signal will change if I, if I play with it and made some adjustments here. But this will suffice. So what are we looking at here? <clears throat> it looks like rubbish, right? It's not rubbish. So let's consider how the system actually uh, works. So the five volt pulse would have, if we could, uh, if this was a two channel, we could overlay them, but it's just a single channel. So if five volt pulse could be overlaid, it would show up in this area right here, right? So it would show up for a duration of one, two, three, 
for um, milli milliseconds in duration. And I'll show you that. Uh, I'll, I'll show you just the control pulse in, after we discuss this briefly. So this would be the leading edge of the control pulse right here. So the rising edge turns on inside the coil and plug assembly. There is a, a igniter, essentially a solid state switch, which is uh, looking for that five volt uh, pulse leading edge in order to turn on. When it turns on, it feeds the uh, current through the primary coil on the uh, ignition coil. So this time here is actually the dwell. So if we could see the current, the current would be like this. The five volt pulse is a square pulse, but the current would rise until it reaches, uh, until it reaches this point in time at the four millisecond point where the five volt pulse would disappear. That's gonna turn off the uh, solid state switch, the igniter inside the coil, at which point in time the primary current flow would stop. As some of you at least will know, when you turn off the primary current flow, the uh, magnet magnetic field within the coil will collapse and induce a high voltage into the secondary, at which point in time it fires the plug, yeah? So it's the turn off of the primary current, not the turn on, but the turn off that allows the, the magnetic field to collapse and uh, inducing the current into the secondary coil which fires the plug. So this is the firing line right here. Traditionally, you might be used to seeing this the other way around, guys. This signal is inverted. We have no ability to invert the uh, signal on a $20 scope here via the selection menu, but I think we can live with it. Just imagine this inverted, if you will, if it makes it easier for you, right? The firing line typically goes up and then you see the spark line up here and then dropping back down. This is kind of backwards. So the firing line is going down. This is the firing line. And this length of time here, from here to here, a little less than two milliseconds, is the spark line. So the firing line and the spark line. Again, a $20 scope. The firing line is pretty attenuated here. As you can see, typically it would be much longer, right? The uh, spark line, typically it's above the zero line considerably, right? Not so much on this little scope here, but you do get the idea, right? So again, turn on, coil's charging, primary coil, primary uh, current turns off, fires the plug, there's the firing line, here's the spark line. This is where the spark extinguishes, right here. So that's how we know that this is the spark line duration <clears throat> burn time if you will and uh, you can see here slight oscillations where the where the energy is just ringing out between the primary and secondary coils basically dissipating within the system and then of course the whole thing would repeat right so it's limited let's be honest what you can garner from this but it is somewhat usable you can pick up a secondary ignition trace uh, unbelievably but it is somewhat limited, right? So again, let's just go back and turn it on. Let's get a live trace again, go back into run mode. And let, let me just make some adjustment on the parameters here while you look at the trace. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna up the frequency. So as you can imagine, the, the time between um, the turn on and the uh, spark event is going to obviously shorten. You can see there on the time base, it's shortening, yeah? Let me, let me go the other way to make the point here, guys, and you'll see it lengthen. I'm just adjusting the frequency. So that would be equivalent to, obviously, the RPM adjusting on the, uh, the engine, right? So let me go back to that baseline setup we had. That was, that's close to it. Okay, and I can also adjust the duty cycle. So watch the duty cycle. By adjusting the duty cycle on here, you can see the dwell time is significantly adjusting. Not the RPM, not the, uh, the, the rate that the spark is occurring, but how long the, uh, how long the uh, coil is actually charging for. And let me just show you the spark here. Can you hear the intensity of the spark changing? Let me drop the intensity to you get to nothing. So very weak spark, minimal dwell time. And then you get to a point where it's optimum. And as I said, 
you can continue to raise the uh, the the, uh, the dwell, but the coil just begins to saturate and make heat, and not so much uh, any more efficiency in the spark itself. Right. Okay. One last thing. Let me show you the uh, the five volt uh, control pulse here. So I've got the duty cycle uh, set right down to zero percent. So there is no uh, pulses coming. Yeah. So let me just step up the uh, duty cycle. You'll notice that the plug is not firing. So let's turn it on. That's 1% duty cycle. So you can see it's extremely narrow pulse width, yeah? And you can see, let's correlate that with the spark intensity. So let's step up the, uh, the width. That's 4% guys. You can see the pulse is getting wider. Maybe you can hear in the background the intensity of the spark actually changing. So let me take that down to nothing again. And we'll start again. That's 1%. So watch the intensity of the spark. You can see it's considerably more intense. That's 10% duty cycle now. Let's ramp up all the way to basically 100%. That's 99%, 100%. There is no pulsing, so at 99%. You can see there's not actually much change in the intensity. There is a limit you get to, obviously, when the uh, coil actually saturates. So again, as the duty cycle, um, the pulse width controls the the, uh, the dwell time, yeah? So let me just take this all the way back down. Something reasonable, say 5% there. And again, the uh, frequency is controlling the, uh, the repetition rate of the spark or this would be a function of RPM, of course. Anyway, I hope that was of some value, guys. Secondary ignition trait on trace on the uh, 152. That's it, boys. Cheers.